Welcome to the Parsha Perspective. Each week, we will delve deep in a weekly Torah portion to find a practical and insightful way to enhance your daily life. Thank you for tuning in. My name is Rabbi Shalom Yemini, and each week we'll look into the weekly Torah portion to find practical and insightful ways to enhance your daily life. This week's Parsha Perspective is in honor of our homeland, Eretz Yisrael, my Kaddish Baruch Hu, may God protect our brave soldiers, and may God return all the hostages from Gaza immediately. This week's Parsha Perspective is in honor of our Shalema, of our Avamitai, Ben Shoshana, and all those who need to experience a speedy and complete recovery. This week's Parsha Perspective is in loving memory of Hinda Bas Adol, Edward Ben Ephraim, Shlomo Ben Edward, and Rechmir Ben Neil Ben Gedaya. May their souls be uplifted and may their memories be a blessing. This week's Torah portion is Parshas Shmini, Bridging the Divide. Before I begin, the release date of this episode coincides with the birthday of Rebbe Tzachayim Mishka on the 25th of Adar, a beacon of modesty. The Rebetzin's legacy exemplifies the profound influence of inner strength and the power of subtle impact. Despite her prominent status as the Rebbe's wife, a position often associated with considerable fame and prestige, Rebbe Tzachayim Mushka embraced a life of remarkable modesty. And so may her life inspire all of us to seek strength from within and live a life of purpose and dedication. Our Parsha begins with Aaron Akain and his four sons being officiated as Kohanim in the Mishkan on the eighth day from its inauguration. God's fire consumed the sacrifices the Karbanis they had brought, signaling the Divine Presence was in the Mishkan. And amid all the excitement, Aaron's eldest two sons, Nadav and Aviyu, presented a Ketoyris offering, an incense offering without direct command, a decision that led to immediate and tragic consequences. Immediately, a heavenly fire came down and consumed them, killing them instantly. Moshe Rabbeinu quickly ordered his cousins to remove Nadav and Aviyu's body from the Mishkan. God then spoke directly to Aaron Akain and commanded him and all future Kohanim never to drink while working or in service in the Mishkan or Besamikdash. If intoxicated, a Kohanim may not differentiate between the pure or impure, potentially making a fatal mistake. The Parsha concludes with the signs that distinguish between a kosher and non-kosher animal. Kosher animals must chew their cud and have split hooves, while kosher fish must have fins and scales. However, a question comes to mind. Following the death of Aaron's two sons, Nadav and Aviyu, the Torah recounts a rather interesting story. After detailing the laws of what to do with each sacrifice, Mishra Binu inquired what happened to the previously sacrificed chatas, the sin offering. The Pasuk writes, darash darash Moshe vihine saraf. And Moshe inquired about the goat of the sin offering and it had already been burnt. And he was angry with Eliezer and he summer Aaron's remaining two sons. And Aaron Akoin responded that his two sons had just passed and therefore he could not eat the sacrifice. Moshe Rabbeinu understood Aaron's answer and accepted his explanation. But why is this exchange and conversation recounted in our Torah portion? What message, what lesson is the Torah trying to convey through detailing this interesting story. While there are many answers to this question, one explanation connects with the life of Rebbe Tzinchai Mushka. Although she shied away from the public eye, all those who interacted with her were amazed by her generosity, kindness, and compassion. The Yorach HaMakadosh of Chaim Ben Attar writes that this story teaches us about empathy and understanding, how to interact and deal with a person who has lost a loved one or is going through a rough and hard time. When Moshe initially sees that one of the sacrifices had been not done correctly, he chastises Aaron's two sons for not following his exact instructions. It was just eight days from the Mishkan's inauguration and they are already veering from the directives that they were given. And this follows the death of their older brothers who died because they did not adhere to the guidelines that Moshe Rabbeinu established. But Aaron Akoyin correctly steps in and explains to his younger brother, that he could not eat the sacrifice because they were in the state of Oinin for Nadav and Aviyu. According to Jewish law, after a death of a loved one, a person assumes the status of an Oinin until the deceased is buried. An Oinin must deal with the arrangements of the burial and funeral, 
and is not obligated to fulfill many mitzvahs. They cannot pray or study Torah, nor can they make a bracha over bread or say the blessings, the bircha samazin, after meals. The Yorach HaMakadosh quotes the Teres Kahanim, that when Moshe Rabbeinu saw the ashes of the Korban Chatas, of the sin offering, of the sacrifice, he immediately got upset with Aaron and his sons. Why weren't they following God's instructions to the letter of the law? Wasn't Nadav and Aviyu's death enough to reiterate, to demonstrate that they must follow God's command precisely and not deviate in any way? And while Moshe Rabbeinu may have been correct, according to the Aruch HaMakadosh, his anger caused him to forget the status of Aaron and his sons. And therefore, when Moshe Rabbeinu heard Aaron HaKoyim's response, he realized immediately that he made a mistake and accepted responsibility. The Pasuk details Moshe Rabbeinu's acceptance. But Yishma Moshe and Moshe heard, V'yitav ve'inav, and the explanation was good in his eyes. The Yorach HaMakadosh explains that this episode follows the death of Nadav and Aviyu to teach us the compassion we must have when interacting with a person who has suffered a loss. We must be extra mindful of their pain and recognize the gravity of their loss. We should offer our unwavering support and understanding as they navigate this challenging time, this challenging period of their lives. And by all accounts, Rebbe Zinchai Mushka epitomized a profound level of understanding, kindness, and compassion. Her humility and generosity extended not only to those who were unaware of her identity, but also to the Hasidim, whom she regarded with affection and concern that one reserves for family. And so therefore in our daily life and amid these difficult times for Jewish people worldwide, it is crucial we foster a deep understanding to bridge the divides within our people. Despite the differences in appearance or practice, it is both our responsibility and duty to uphold the unity and strengthen the bond between Jewish people worldwide. I will conclude with a powerful quote from the first Chabad Rebbe of Shneur Zalman of Liadi. No matter how engrossed one may be in the loftiest of occupations, one must never remain insensitive to the cry of a child. Have a great weekend and good Shabbos. Thank you for tuning in to the Parsha Perspective. Check out our website, theparshaperspective.com. Send thoughts and comments to theparshaperspective at gmail.com. Till next time, thanks for listening. Mm-hmm.